Greetings and salutations, Life and Poetry fam. Welcome back to the channel with your boy, your host, one and only, Marcus T, this guy. And welcome to part two of Poetry 102 with Marcus T. Um, guys, if you've been following along thus far, uh, you know what this series is about. If not, I'll, let me tell you. Um, this series, in this series, we, we will be discussing and breaking down tips, techniques, tips and techniques for how to find your voice in writing, finding your writing style, as well as develop, developing um, voice and tone in your writing style. Um, we've already went over in the first episode, or first part, first episode, um, the base definition of voice. Um, uh, also, we've given examples of what voice is in literature, um, as well as the definition of voice in poetry. Um, I pray you guys watch the video. If not, um, you can find the video linked here above or just go back to the playlist of Poetry 102 and you can go and follow along and catch up if you need to. But um, in this video here, in this video part two, we will be talking about five steps that can help you find your voice as a writer. Again, remember these tips, tools, techniques, tricks, and trades don't just sit in poetry. I'm basing it in poetry because I am a poet and I use these for myself <clears throat> in my poetry <clears throat> from time to time. But remember that these transcend through any form of literature, whether it's a novel writing, um, storytelling, short stories, children's books, whatever type of literature you may be writing, these can, may, and will help you to achieve the, the set desire and goal that you have for your bodies of work, right? But before we jump into this here, guys, and you guys do me a favor, Go ahead and uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Once that's done, please be sure to turn on that notification bell so that you can be notified every time we hear our life in poetry drop a new video. And remember, guys, that we say we, excuse me, that I say we, because you never know who's going to pop up and grace us with their presence here on the channel. Excuse me. Some faces may be old, some faces may be new. You never know. But to know, you have to do what? Huh? That's right. That bill has to be on so that you can be notified, informed, and stay up to date with everything we're doing, with everything we are doing, especially here with the Poetry 102 series. I think that this will go a long way with helping writers to find their lane, their voice, and their, their way to get their, their writing uh, to where they want it to be, right? So again, the first, first, first part, we've talked about voice by definition. Now let's talk about tips. Now let's talk about steps to find your voice, right? I have five steps here. Five solid steps. Now, they are, uh, there may very well be five, 10, 15, 30, 40, 50 more steps here. But I think these five are a backbone of, 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 of what, you, what you need to get the solid foundation of uh, perfecting your, your, your work and finding, um, and, and, and finding your voice as a writer, right? So, five steps, right? We're going to dive right into this here. We're going to get five good steps, right? So, um, step one. Determine your point of view, right? For anything else, determine your point of view, right? And before you start any project, right? As you find your point of view, ask yourself these questions, right? Why am I writing what I'm writing? Whether it's fiction, nonfiction, poetry, a novel, children's book. Why am I doing this here, right? First and foremost, why am I writing this here? Why, right? Why, right? And also ask yourself this question here. As you're writing this, do you want this to be a theme in your writing, right? Do you want this to be an opinion about something that you're trying to express or, or you're, you're, you are, or, or it's something, you know, what theme do you want to get across here? Do you want to uh, express an opinion? Do you want to paint a picture here? Do you want to be happy here? Do you want to just be happy, sad, up, down? What theme are you trying to get across, right? You find your point of view, right? Why am I writing this here? What theme do I want to get across, right? Another question you may ask yourself um, uh, is, is what you're writing about something you may have observed in real life, right? Or uh, an experience that you want to uh, incorporate in, in your work, right? Last question, ask yourself, do you just want to tell a good story, right? Um, ask yourself, why am I writing this here? Do I have a theme what I'm writing? Am I writing about something I've experienced or something I want to experience, want to put in here? Um, or do I just want to tell a, a, oh, I'm cuss, a dag on good story here? That's find that point of view. Find where you want to go with this here 
and you stick to it. Stick to it, right? Step two, pick a consistent voice for your narrator, right? Then this is, now this step here um, in context, it's for when, if you're writing a novel or a story that has seven characters in there, even a poem, a poem that has a, a dialogue between two people or, or or so on and so forth, and you want to pick your narrator to make sure that your that the person is, is expanding on that storyline and, and guiding you with that red, just like the GPS, right? Guiding you through, through that storyline. But specifically in, in this body work here, right? Um, find that voice. Find that voice. Um, whether it's in third, fourth person, whether it's in first person, whatever it may be, find that voice. And it, there are times where a lot of writers may toggle between voices. Um, whether it's first person or third person, right? Uh, it's okay because it, it's going to help you to establish uh, your own lane here. Uh, okay, wait. Find it, find that there, right? Those writers may do that, right? But you, before you find your lane and stick with it, if you want to write solely in third person, write in third person. If you want to write first person, write in first person. If you want your, if you want to write a monologue with one person here. And that person doesn't have any climax in their voice. If there is no excitement in there. If that's what you want to write, stick with it. It's fine. It's your work, right? This is your work. You know, you're you're creating your style of writing as you're finding your voice, right? So step one was what? Determine your point of view. Step two, pick a, pick a consistent voice, right? Pick a consistent voice. Don't have don't battle between seven eight types of voices. It pick one and stick with here. Remember, your voice isn't about. Um, Specifically, um, uh, as as you as, as you and I will be talking, my voice may be more deep than yours, or your voice may be an octave higher, or octave lower than mine. Right? It's not necessarily like that. It's just about how you want to convey that picture as you're painting. Remember, it, as you're reading a as you're reading a page or paper, you don't know how that person is talking. You have to have the diction there to say, okay, maybe this person is talking like this, or this person is doing that there. But find your lane and stick with it. Don't diff, don't don't deviate from it. You ha you have it. Run with it. Run with it. Right. Step three. Think think about sentence structure and word choices. Right. Ask yourself, uh, will you be using perfect English? Uh, will you be using uh, 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 broken English or co co colloquialisms? Uh, when you cut somebody out in your work, right? Find that out. How you want to structure that there? And again, as you're sticking in your lane, as you're finding your point of view, your point of view, your, your point of view, you're writing this piece here to say, okay, this poem, I'm going to say poetry, right? this poem here is so hardcore that I want you to feel each bit of pain that the character is, 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 is walking through as you're here, right? So you have that point of view, right? This, my point of view is I want you to feel this pain here. I'm writing a poem about a person going through hell and high water, right? I'm writing this in first person, right? And not, I'm writing this in first person so that you can know that it's me, it's I, right? It's not uh, we or this it's me, I, so on and so forth, right? Write it in that, write it in that voice there um, uh, as you're trying to determine how you want your words to come out. Again, uh, word choice and word structure go a long way in anything you're writing. Uh, there have been times where, where I've, I'll speak for myself, where I've, I've had um, certain structures, certain phrases come together that made no sense at all. And I had, I had to fight tooth and nail to explain what I was doing to people and they were still confused. And I was like, it's fine. It's all right. Because the next person may get it. The next person didn't get it. So I went to the third person. Finally, somebody got it. I understood what was happening there. I, I, I was creating something that didn't make sense and allowing it to make sense creatively. Right? All right. So again, remember though, that this, this work here doesn't just sit with poetry. It transcends to many bodies of work. So you're going to hear things that interchange as, as I'm going over these steps here. And you say, and you ask yourself, well, how does that go with poetry? Again, you find your rules that you work that work for you, and you allow it to, to move as you go out. Some of these tips you may not use in poetry, and that's fine. But again, if you aren't a poet, you can use these for your works. You're, if you're writing novels, you write to write this children's book. Um, especially in the children's book, your word choice in the children, children's book go a long way. Go a long way. Um, allowing the, allowing that child, to, to, whoever's reading that book, to be able to to paint the picture of what's happening between A and B, B and C, C and D. It it, it allows the, the 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 foundation to build and grow as as you climax to the end of the story. Um, 
it, it, it goes a long way, right? And da, 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 it, it compiles strategically so that you can get the climax of, what, of, of what's happening with that person emotionally um, as that character is getting to the next space, the next stage to, to transcend to whatever's coming next around that corner there. And some people just jump right into it. Um, I, I'm a person, um, because poetry is so short, uh, often we don't have the time to lay out this here, this, uh, this, this, long, this long blockade of this, that, and the third. Sometimes they'll just jump right in. Uh, but there, there was one poem I did specifically. It was a two-page poem um, that I wrote. And it's two pages, not intentionally, right? It wasn't intentionally done anyway. But how I found myself painting the picture of, of, of what I was trying to get across, I had to layer it so, I had to layer it so much to get to that end point. And when it hit the end point, they were like, yo, I did that. I did that. I allowed it to happen in the way, that way for a reason. And it became something that was like, oh, my God. Like I so as I went back to read it, I walked myself through it, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I thought like, this story good here. This is this is a good storyline here, but you know I was able to do that as I lay that out there, right? Now, by contrast, um, other authors let dialogue drive that narrative, right? So uh, uh, and and they only interject narration when dialogue simply won't suffice. Sometimes dialogue won't help the picture get to where you want to get to. So you have to narrate it through, okay? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Sometimes you have to narrate through, through that way so you can walk through that wavelength of things. If this don't make sense, I really apologize here. It, it's a lot to uh, take this in. Um, even for me, it, it, even, even as I go through, through and write these notes down from time to time, I go do my research and things. Because again, I don't want you guys to just have the poetry side of things. If you're a writer, I want to help writers who like to write. I don't care if you're writing poetry, children's stories, whatever it is. I like people who, who want to dive into their writing and want to perfect what they're doing. And the goal is to give you everything that I think you can use here. Um, and if there's anything that I didn't go over here, please feel free to comment down below. If you want to see the notes that I have here, because I, I have a lot of notes, but I, I skipped through a lot. Because again, I want to give you just the, the, the pieces of it that I think you need to hold on to. But if you want to see any of these notes here, let me know and I will gladly um, email these to you guys. Just reach out to me. All my links in the description are below if you need to get in contact with me. My email address down there, social media down there. Everything's down there if you want to reach out to me um, to, so we can go more in depth about this here or if you want these notes here. Um, yeah, so you find your balance between description and dialogue, right? Uh, bu, 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 bu. And picking one of these styles um, is, is, a whole, is, is another great way to establish a specific unique, a specific and unique voice, right? Either, either I'm going to be long-winded with, the, with uh, a description, right? Or, or if I'm going to be here with this uh, 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 this uh, narration side of things, where where the dialogue uh, just won't won't help, you know. Um, all right, step five and the last step. This is a great one here. I think I, I tested this in the video that came before this one here with in voice and the, the the definition of voice here. But step five is the biggest one. This is why I left it last. They say the best is always last. Step five, write all the time, no matter what. Right, finding your voice, specifically yours, takes time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Find your, finding your voice takes time and effort, right? And do not be afraid through this process here. Do not be afraid to experiment with a lot, with various different writing styles, right? Right? Don't be afraid to do that. Also, don't be afraid to try other voices out. You may you may see somebody else doing something here. And say, oh, I want to try that for me. It, go for it. Go for it. See how it works for you. And you may can take that and then flip it and make it your own. But you have to continue writing all the time, all the time. If 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 you're most comfortable writing romance novels, right? Try your hands writing thrillers. Right? It's complete opposite. Right? Romance. And thriller, completely opposite spectrum, but you 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 can find something there that you can use there, right? It goes a long way, a long way, right? You want to write a novel, try a short story, try a short story, and you know, short stories you have to get your point across extremely fast because it's not as it's not as elusive and and as extensive as a novel is. 
but you can get it done, right? You can sure enough get it done um, by just simply trying other lanes. There's nothing wrong with trying other lanes, but you don't know how to do it unless you tap into it, right? Try other lanes. Uh, you can also take writing courses. Uh, you can uh, try writing prompts. You, you can Google a lot of things. Um, Pinterest has a few writing prompts that I've used before just to just to, to brainstorm a lot. Um, and it helps to open up those channels in your mind. Help, it helps you to move in those those directions. It keeps things flowing and flowing and flowing. And it, it's, it, it's helped me through a lot of things with those there. But um, uh, teamwork on your writing skills, express yourself, expose yourself. Yes, expose yourself to different styles um, and examples of voices. If you if you're experienced writing a block, right? This is a big tool that I use here. All this is in step five, right? If you're experienced writing this block, try your hand at free writing. Just start writing random stuff down, and let your mind take you where it wants to take you. Don't hold it back. If you write uh, cat, hat, bat, rat on paper 72 times, do that. Allow that Allow that. That time to process through your mind, right? As you just start just writing stuff. If you might have a thought about something that ain't got nothing to do with your writing. Put it on paper. And then expand on as you're going through. Because you, you never know what comes out of that. You never know what comes out of that. It's so much stuff that's come out of me free writing. That's ridiculous. The whole book. For uh, book two, uh, book two, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, intimacy, right? Uh, intimacy, uh, poetic expressions. Um, everything that was there was basically a free write that turned into something. When I ever, yes, 10 pieces, I think all of the free writes turned into something. I was up one night, I remember because I started the book. Right, short story. We're gonna close up in a minute here, but short story. I was up writing the book. Right, um, I was with my nephew. I was, I was house sitting for my nephew's mom, and I was in her living room writing. And I was like, "Yo, this, this is great. I'm free writing. I'm trying to trying to get these writers. Like, I'm free writing, free writing, free writing, free writing." And then, bow, I had two pieces done. Um, and I went back through my notes, and I was like, "Okay, let, let me see what's happening here." And I'm like, "Oh wait, this this fits here. I'm, let me move this here," and it it birthed something amazing. First something amazing. You, you never know how your mind can unearth something unconsciously that will take you to that next space, that, that will transcend you to where you want to get to, right? So just be patient with yourself. Um, it takes time. Allow yourself to take the time that's needed to get there um, and trust your process. Trust your process, right? So that's five steps there, guys. Again, um, five steps to uh, finding your voice in writing. Step one, Determine, determining your point of view. Step two, pick a consistent voice for your narrators or, or your characters, whatever it may be, whether it's uh, first person, third person, whatever it may be. Um, step three, think about sentence structure and word choice. Step four, find a balance between description and dialogue. Uh, step five, uh, step four, find a description between description and dialogue, as well as sticking to your guns, right? Sticking to your guns, committing to that style. Uh, once you find the difference between the two, um, and step five, write all the time while remembering that finding your voice takes time, right? All the time. Remember that finding your voice takes time. I love your family. Um, that concludes this for today. The five steps to, uh, finding your voice and finding, finding your, your voice as a writer, um, and whatever writing style you want to tap into. Again, if, if I went through this too fast, guys, please let me know. And I will, I will post these tips here. Uh, on my Instagram page, on the officially.marks.t Instagram page. I'm going to post them there. Actually, I'm going to post them there because I think these will, I think these tips will help a, a writer go a long way with what they want to do. Um, but guys, keep writing, keep believing in yourself and keep doing you. No matter what happens, don't give up on yourself. Keep honing your craft, keep matching your skill and keep enjoying it. Keep enjoying it while you're doing it. And remember, take your time because it takes time to get to you want to get to. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Um, again, guys, remember that on Tuesdays and Thursdays that these videos for the Poetry 102 series will drop. So this video here is coming out on a Thursday. So next week, Tuesday, the next video, the next video will come out, part three, right? Uh, where we we'll, where where we will be talking about what is writing style. We'll be going through the definition of that there. 
um, as we move into uh, the, the next videos. But stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Some great stuff is coming. Um, again, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Um, if you haven't watched the first videos, go back and watch them. If you haven't watched Poetry 101, please go back and watch that. Um, and have a great day. Don't forget, keep writing. Right now, when you finish this video, pick up a pen and start writing, guys. I challenge you to do that. I encourage you to do it. Um, I love you guys so much. Again, be blessed. As always, as we always say here, guys, be blessed. Stay safe. And until next time, we out. Peace. <laughs> Ooh, I'm out of breath. Jeez. <laughs>